pessoas, tudo bem com vocês? Já deu tempo de ver Top Gun, um dos melhores filmes do ano, né? Porque eu quero mostrar pra vocês toda a conversa que eu tive com o editor do filme, Ed Hamilton. Eu sei que um tempo atrás a gente soltou um vídeo sobre a edição do Top Gun, eu falando dos pontos fortes do filme, de como ele foi montado, mas eu botei só um pedacinho da conversa que eu tive com o Ed Hamilton, que ficou, sei lá, 40 minutos conversando. E eu vou falar que ele deu muito insight legal sobre como ele monta a cena pra dar a sensação de velocidade, construção de emocional, seguir as dicas do Tom Cruise, Muita coisa. Então hoje eu tô querendo mostrar pra vocês a conversa completa com spoilers do filme. Primeiro porque o filme já saiu pra você comprar, alugar, então você já pode assistir no conforto da sua casa. Segundo porque eu queria falar um pouco mais de spoilers, assim. A gente falou um pouquinho de... Não tem muito spoiler, não vai estragar a sua experiência. O lance desse filme não é o segredo, não tem nenhum segredo, é mais a, a experiência como um todo, entendeu? Mas o que vai da experiência não só de assistir o filme, mas desse editor, um cara que já editou Kingsman, X-Men First Class, que quer e agora com a obra-prima dele, Top Gun. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Hi, Mr. Eddie Hamilton. It's a great honor to speak with you. You have no idea how how Deixa eu ver tua carinha, deixa. <laughs> My English barrier, it, it's knocking me down right now. I wish I could understand Portuguese <laughs> and then it would be fine. Sorry. A lot of your work inspired me. It, it, and I didn't even know it was you. I saw Top Gun Maverick last week and I said, Wow, it was good, damn. Oh my God, I have to know who's editing this. So I, I chase your profile on IMDB and oh my God, <laughs> there are so many works, great works. It's very kind. Thank you for saying that. There's there's plenty of like very average movies on there as well. I'm well aware of it. So like everybody, you know, we all we all try very hard and not everything turns out as well as, as good as you hope. I'm not saying this because I'm talking to you. Deep. When I saw the movie, there are a lot of winning key points in this yeah. movie. Yeah. The thing that stood out the most is the editing. I, I really think it's the editing because the whole movie have a sense, a good sense of timing. Not just the action scenes, but also in the dramatic scenes. I'm gonna focus a little bit on the action scenes. Okay. There was three main aspects that I noticed. The first, I think the obvious one, is the aspect of speed. You have to maintain sense of speed. Yeah. The second was the sense of spatial awareness. Geography. Yeah, I didn't feel lost, like some fighting scenes when you everything is moving around, you don't know wh where you are. The third thing that I noticed is the sense of effort. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the movie and, and I felt a lack of air. <gasps> yeah, that's yeah. so good. I'm so pleased to hear it. You are aware, you're, you're trying to make sure that each sequence has every aspect that you describe. You have to have geography because that's almost the most important thing. Otherwise you disengage from the sequence and, and you stop because you don't understand what's going on. You stop caring about it. You use the pilot's eye lines. So when they look over their shoulder or they look back and they say a line, it indicates they're talking to someone behind them. If a pilot is in front and we need to see a plane behind them so they understand that there's somebody chasing them we will use visual effects sometimes to put a plane behind them over their shoulder all oh, right right sometimes or they will film an element of a jet and we'll use vfx to put it in the shot so you understand and it's very interesting i i remember watching the dog fights in the original star wars movie from 1977 they do that quite a bit they add over the corner of the x-wings over the shoulder of the x-wing pilots they add tie fighters so you understand that there's someone chasing them in the original original Top Gun, they would quite often explain what they were going to do. They would say, banking left, banking right, he's on my tail, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're coming to the left! Three mix, dead ahead, coming down the left side. Then you see them do it. So that's the only way the audience could understand the geography. We didn't have to do that as much. So in the final mission, when Rooster is slowing down, we would cut to a graphic inside the aircraft carrier, and you would see that the you know Mavericks getting ahead and Roosters slowing down, and you would see the enemy jets, and you would understand how how close the enemy jets are to them. So that's also how we did that. The speed is something that we're very conscious of because these jets go incredibly fast, 700 miles an hour, and 
it's very hard to film them because they're going so fast and uh, you only really get a sense of speed if a camera is stationary because then you get a lot of ground rush or you get a lot of cloud rush behind the jets. So if you have an empty sky of just blue, then you don't feel any speed. So you have to pick the little tiny pieces of action where the jets are flying over some terrain where you can see stuff moving. Like if it's just sand, then you can't sell it, you don't understand the speed. So when we're going through the footage, we're trying to find little tiny pieces that sell the sense of speed. Um, and if it doesn't, it doesn't go in the film. In terms of the the diff the pressure, you know, the, how hard it is to fly and the physical exertion Version. That was something that Tom Cruise told us right at the beginning that he was his goal for the film because he didn't feel in the first Top Gun that the um, you felt how hard it was to fly a jet, how physically demanding it was to fly a jet. And so he wanted to make sure that we educated the audience about how it feels to pull G's and then how, how he describes your skull crushing your spine. <laughs> Your lungs imploding like an elephant sitting on your chest. You can see the actors all straining. And then the other thing that we're doing is making sure that we're, you can hear the actors exerting when they're flying. It's kind of, uh, uh, they're fighting with the stick and you feel how tough it is. <laughs> Você já fez o pedido de like nesse vídeo? Eu vou pedir algo! Meu Deus do céu! Alguém acorda esse cara pra ele pedir o like pras pessoas que estão assistindo? De repente pode até pedir pra se inscreverem! O canal tá quase batendo um milhão e o cara tá dormindo! Ô, gaveta! Capitão Gaveta! Hã? O, o, o like? Já, já pediram o like já? Não, é você que ia pedir, ô Capitão Gaveta! Ah! Pode dar o um like aí no... Ó, oh, só cuidado com a subida aí! O que foi, Capitão? The aerial sequences took months to film. I would say around four or five months of filming. Oh my God. Yeah. You only get maybe five or 10 seconds each time a plane goes up and they fly for about an hour. So the way we cut those sequences, we worked on for months and months to make sure that the cutting and the graphics and the reactions of the pilots all communicated the, the spatial awareness of where the jets are on the mission. But the fact that you understood it means that we did our job. When you're editing a, a scene like the aerial chase on a jet or something like that, is there any rule you have to follow? Like, like that rule when you're editing two people talking and you have the 180 degrees? It's interesting. There aren't really any rules. It just has to work, right? <laughs> so, yeah. and it doesn't work for a long time. The first aerial dogfight where Maverick is teaching the pilots and he's shooting them all down and they're doing the push-ups. That sequence, it's only four minutes, 50 seconds, but it started out maybe about 12 minutes long. I just kept compressing it and it took about over a year to edit. What? From the first assembly that I did and then over the course of a year, we just kept crunching it and crunching it and getting it tighter and tighter because it has to be fast and exciting and fun. If it's long, it's just boring. Comandante, estou me aproximando aqui da base inimiga. Perfeitamente, Capitão Gaveta. Agora tente hackear o computador inimigo. Entendido, senhor. Hackeando o computador inimigo. Droga! Eles estão usando o sistema de segurança mais avançado que existe. E qual é esse sistema, Capitão? É NordVPN. Oh, meu Deus! É o serviço de VPN mais eficiente do mundo contra cyberataques. Eu tô tentando hackear o computador deles aqui, mas eu não consigo, né? O IP deles aqui tá louco, tá parecendo que eles estão em outro lugar. NordVPN deixa o seu computador completamente protegido. Mesmo se eles estivessem conectados no Wi-Fi público, eu não conseguiria invadir o computador deles. Nem o celular, nem nada disso. <risos> Miserável! Comandante! Comandante! Estou bem! Foi nada, foi nada, não, só. 
Para ir para respirar. Capitão Gaveta, abordar missão, voltar para o porta-aviões. Não, comandante, eu não viajei até outro país só para ver aquele filme que só saiu aqui nesse país e não do Brasil, para poder voltar agora. Mas, Capitão Gaveta, se você também instalar o NordVPN, você poderá assistir filmes e séries que foram lançados em outros países diretamente do conforto da sua casa em total anonimato. Oh, meu Deus! Mas e se eu quiser assistir pelo meu celular? Pelo celular também, NordVPN funciona com iOS, Android, desktop. Você estará seguro em vários devices ao mesmo tempo, somente com a sua conta NordVPN. Que notícia excelente, comandante. Talvez eu possa usar aquele link nordvpn.com gaveta para conseguir um mês grátis. Um mês grátis não, gaveta. Como estamos na campanha de conscientização sobre cibersegurança, se a pessoa clicar no link, vai ganhar quatro meses grátis ao assinar NordVPN. Que incrível, comandante. Eu vou agora mesmo assinar a Zato. NordVPN, o VPN mais rápido que você pode ter no mundo todo. Comprovado e testado. E ainda com um desconto maravilhoso que está aqui na descrição desse post. Vai lá, NordVPN. Ah! There was some storyboards or some things for the Arrow sequences. Joe Kaczynski, the director, he did about 6,000 storyboards for the whole movie. Right. Wow. A lot. Right. The aerial sequences, he did storyboard as best as he could. That is an ideal version of the sequence. And we used previs sometimes. We animated the storyboards and used previs. The problem is that the reality of filming a real jet, you can plan, but you get what you get when you're trying to film something that's moving that quickly. When we were editing the sequences, for a while, we filmed the inside of the jet first. So I didn't have any exterior shots of jets when I first edited the scenes. All I had was storyboards or bits of previs. The other thing that we did is in our briefings on the naval bases, we had two F-18s on wooden sticks. And so we would hold the sticks and we would animate what the planes were doing like this with little models and we would sometimes film that on an iPhone and we would use that and cut that into the movie just to have something to edit the sequence with it would look funny you know, um, know. but we didn't use any fully CG jets everything was real I gotta ask you, if you know the size of the footage a monster movie like this I do know, it's We had nearly 814 hours. Oh my god. I'm not joking. For a two hour movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I have a, a big team of people who help. It was a year of filming, which is very long. We would try and stay on top of the footage each day by working through it and marking it up and putting all the line the the lines of dialogue together one after the other so we could like review them and we built gigantic reels of of action that that I could go through and you know find little pieces of action that I needed it just takes a very long time and on a film like this you can't rush it because you need to know that you've got the best footage and in order to know that you've got the best shots you have to go through it and check you said a lot of times you work on set yes so i wonder Why? <laughs> Sometimes you're trying to stay on top of the footage. Sometimes the director wants your opinion and, you know, will these shots work in the film? On Top Gun for the aerial sequences, I was in every briefing that the pilots had, so I understood what they were trying to do in the air. Personally, if I can work away from the set, I prefer that because you need to focus intensely on your work as an editor. And when you're on set, you can get quite distracted by people coming to visit It, or people looking over your shoulder. There are some editors who love to work on set. Paul Matchless, who edited Baby Driver, and he worked on the new Flash movie. He was on set the whole time by choice because he really likes grabbing the footage and starting to build the scene immediately. But personally, for example, on Kingsman, I was on set for most of the fight sequences because we were building them on the timeline. And if they didn't, if they weren't quite right, we would do them again immediately. 
you know, because the, the actors and the crew were right there. And all those camera movements are so specific on those kinds of action sequences. I will be on set if I need to, but my personal choice is to be in a quiet environment where I can really focus. <laughs> I understand that. That's my opinion as well. For me, the, the editing of this movie is so great because there are a lot of action scenes, but you always man, man, maintain the contrast. You you have the, the, the cool, dramatic scenes yes. and you have the action, but nothing feels rushed. Nothing feels like, I don't know, well, it, it's that scene is too long. No. I've seen the film 300 times to make sure <laughs> that it's as good as it can be. I'm not exaggerating. Every scene in the movie, we watch dozens and dozens and dozens of times to check the pace and the rhythms and make sure it was great. The other thing that's great about this film is the emotional story is a very simple story, ultimately. Maverick is alone at the beginning of the film and he, ha he has a family at the end of the film. He has this dysfunctional relationship with his best friend's son, Rooster, and the movie is about them working through the emotions of that relationship and then resolving their conflict at the end. Right at the end of the movie, they hug on the deck and he says, thank you for saving my life. That's what my dad would have done. So you get that emotional release at the end of the film, but it's very simple. There are other stories within, with Penny and, and with Phoenix and Bob and all that, but the core emotional story is a very simple one that everybody can relate to. You know, whether you've broke, whether you've um, fallen out with a friend or you have fallen out with your parents or your brother or sister, when you reunite, it's incredibly emotional and every human being can understand that emotion and how powerful it is to reconcile with somebody after something bad has happened in your life. That's the real key to the success, you know, emotionally of the film as well. So every scene where Maverick and Rooster are together, we're fo the scene is focused around that. From the very first scene in the bar all the way through to the end, it's about making sure that you feel the conflict between Maverick and Rooster. And it's a mystery as well. Like you're wondering what's happened, why, what happened to this friendship or this, this father-son relationship and you understand as the film plays out, you, you're given little pieces of information about Maverick's motivation for pulling Rooster's papers and all that stuff. When you see Maverick at the end saying, you saved my life, you know, he's saying that not just for saving his life on the action scene, he's saving his life in total. Yes. It, it, it's forgiveness. It's, yes. Yes. We understand. I understood that. You're taking off this heaviness of my yes. chest. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's that, it. That was, I understand. You see, that's why the editing is so good. Thank you. <laughs> I will say that the editing, it, it was me with my fingers on the keyboard and my fingers <laughs> on the mouse. But yeah. Joe Kaczynski and Jerry Bruckheimer and Tom Cruise and Chris McQuarrie are very good at storytelling. And it is a team effort, ultimately, right? I, I can't, I know, I I can't know, take I credit. Plus... I, I had two other editors who came on to help me for a few months each when I was overwhelmed. Steven Mirioni, who has an Oscar, and Chris Lebenson, who helped on the original Top Gun. They both came in for a few months and contributed ideas to s small pieces of the film. So it is a team effort. I want to acknowledge that, you know? And, I, <laughs> and I'll say not because I'm talking to you. Uh, a few Oscars ago, Ford vs. Ferrari won the Oscars. And I say, if that movie won an Oscar and this movie movie did not get a, a, at least a nominee i will be offended i'll be offended <laughs> at least nominee that's very yep. kind this film deserve it wow thank you mr eddie hamilton thank you so much thank you <laughs> for this interview for your time it's uh it's really spying for me I, I i'm just doing youtube videos but it, it's really spying for me to talk uh, with a person doing all this i don't know beautiful works that thank you, do. you i'm so grateful thank you for inviting me on um i love watching your videos uh even though i don't understand portuguese <laughs> i have watched some of them they're good fun and um thank you for everything you do for the filmmaking community it's great i wish thank i could you. come visit one day i love your country i love brazil i wish i could come visit one day oh but... yeah uh, no i'm i gotta work 
support this. We have a lot of uh, 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 main events. I don't know how to say this in, in English. In here, uh, film con, and yes. I don't know. You gotta be in one of them. Well, let me know if I can come. I'll try and come. I'm busy for two years on Mission Impossible, so maybe in <laughs> maybe in 2024, <laughs> in the autumn of 2024, I can come. <laughs> Nesse vídeo aqui o Ed Hamilton falou muito mais, obviamente, a opinião dele sobre como ele montou o filme e tudo mais. Se você quiser saber a minha opinião sobre esse filme, eu fiz um vídeo sobre isso, eu expliquei, fiz comparação com Ford vs Ferrari. Mas se você realmente gosta desse lance de análise cinematográfica, pequenos detalhes fazem a diferença. Eu fiz um estudo das cores no cinema, nas séries, como cada cor influencia alguma coisa e você às vezes nem repara que está te influenciando. É um tipo de assunto que eu adoro falar. Eu só não gosto mais do que o beijo que eu gosto de mandar na sua bundinha. <risos>